Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cypher and today I'm going to be showing you guys my Dragon Knight build called Cypher's Dragon Knight. Yes, it's a very original name, but let's get to the point. I want to make this video really short. I've seen build videos go up to 20 to 30 minutes. I'm going to make this fast. I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and hopefully you guys get the gist of things and start kicking ass in Cyrodiil. Now, first off, my race, I'm a Dark Elf. Now, the reason I'm a Dark Elf is I really like the passives. They do help um, increase max magic and stamina by 6%. Resist flame. This helps a lot when you're going against another Dragon Knight or a flame user. Increases maximum magicka by 3%. And increase spell damage with fire attacks by 7%. That's a given. Most of your attacks are going to come from fire. Now, if you don't like Dark Elves, that's not a problem. There's a lot of other opportunities for you. You could be a High Elf. You could be a Imperial. You could be a Red Guard, an Orc. There's a lot of different passives that can accommodate your needs for this build and it's just your preference this build is really flexible let's start off with the first bar it's going to be our sword and shield the reason i chose sword and shield there's two reasons mainly one invasion is a good knockdown ability it really helps me win a lot of my fights two i like the the damage mitigation i do with my shield and it's really tanky and it still does a good amount of dps now here's our First bar, it's going to be Unstable Flame, solid damage over time damage, it really helps. And you can actually renew Unstable Flame before it runs out and it will keep max damage. So you can potentially keep max damage for Unstable Flame throughout the entire fight if you time it properly. Flame Lash, I used to use Molten Whip because it gave a good boost for all my other flame abilities. But the problem is Molten Whip is going to get nerfed and Flame Lash is going to get boosted. So, in the next patch, I think the 1.2, yeah, the 1.22 patch, that's what's going to happen. So, I said to go with Flame Lash. Invasion. I win most of my fights using Invasion. I knock them down. They're already out of stamina. They can't get back up. And then I finish them off with a few Flame Lashes and Unstable Flame. The reason I chose Invasion is because this morph helps when it comes to keeping them on the ground longer. The longer they stay on the ground, the better chance you have at winning the fight. Dragon Fire Scale, this is the gem of this build. Dragon Fire Scale. The reason I, just, I didn't choose the other morph, which gave 1500 spell resistance, because we're wearing 7 out of 7 light. I'll get into that later. And so we already reached the soft cap for spell resistance. Now, you're always going to be ready to use this Dragon Fire Scale. It's going to help you win a lot of your fights. The extra damage that you do really, really gets them blindsided, because they're not going to see it coming. Most of them. Burning Talons. Perfect CC, perfect AoE damage. I really like this ability. I don't really have to explain why. Okay, I use this right before I drop my standard, and I always get a few kills from this. This really helps when I'm outnumbered. And I use it a lot also when I'm facing an enemy who doesn't have ranged abilities. I CC them, and then I get back a few steps, and then I use Flame Lash. Flame Lash actually has an 8 meter, um, 8 meter range which is pretty long, longer than most melee abilities. So if I can CC them, take a few steps back and start flame lashing them, they won't be able to hit me, and I like that. Let's go, oh yeah, ultimate standard of might. You already know, this thing is the boss, possibly one of the best ultimates in the game. Let's go to our second ability, bar. Harness Magicka, it's a nice damage shield. It lasts for 24 seconds, so you pop it before the fight, you don't have to worry about it, unless the fight is too long. It creates 304 point damage shield. Okay, that's not a lot, but you have to remember you take 50% less while 50% less damage from spells while the shield holds. So this is potentially a 608 point damage shield. Also, all the spells that you absorb, you gain back magicka based off how much light armor you're wearing, and we're wearing seven out of seven light. So right now it's 35%. Once I max out harness magicka, the, the fourth version I think will be a little higher than that. And it helps you out. It's a shield and it helps you gain magic back. So it's a really good ability. Immovable. I don't have this morphed for one reason. I'm not wearing any heavy armor. And all the morphs involve heavy armor. So we're not going to morph immovable unless you're wearing heavy armor. And if you are, you want to morph it to where it increases the duration. But for now, we're just going to stick with immovable. For 8 seconds, we have 1,000 armor and spell resistance. And grants immunity to knockback and disabling effects. So... If you can pop this right before a fight and you finish them off, you won't have to worry about getting knocked down for 8 seconds, and that's perfect. Mutagen. 
A lot of people are running around with rapid regeneration and let me tell you why mutagen is the better option for this healing. First of all, you pop mutagen once and then you don't have to worry about it for 20 seconds. It also serves as a safety net. So basically, rapid regeneration can be out DPS really easily. So can mutagen, but at least with mutagen, if you drop below 20% health, you're gonna get that safety net 280 instant additional heal and that will buy you enough time to react and maybe pop a dragon's blood if you need to. Dragon fire scale on both bars because you're gonna be using this ability a lot, waiting for them to cast that crystal shard, that spear, whatever they're shooting at you, poison arrows, snipes, whatever, you're gonna be reflecting those hits and you're gonna be doing it with honor. Green dragon blood, possibly one of the best abilities for dragon knights, what one of the best abilities overall for all classes. This is Insta heal, but the problem is a lot of Dragon Knights are not using this ability properly. They are waiting till they're like 50% health and then they start using Green Dragon's Blood. This uses up a lot of magic up. You want to use this when you're really low health because imagine someone uses up all their magicka just to get you to like 20% health and then you pop this and you basically negate everything that they've done. That's how you win fights. Wait and take the risk with Green Dragon Blood. Wait till you're low health. And play it safe, but not too safe. Soul Assault. This has helped me win so many fights. Especially when I'm outnumbered. What I like to do is I like to focus on one person. Reflect the hits onto another person. And then when, that, when, I, when I notice that the other person isn't really paying attention. I'll pop Soul Assault. It does a lot of damage. And it a blue, a, if you're not dodging Soul Assault. If you're not blocking it. Then you're pretty much dead. And I like to do that to even the playing field, especially when I'm outnumbered. I like to focus on the weakest target and soul assault them and then focus on the other targets. So the thing is you have to be careful with this, with this ultimate. It's easily, easily interruptible. You have to use it at the right time. You have to be smart with it. So that's all I have. Let's go into the passes. Ardent Flame, all the passes. Draconic Power, all the passes. Earthen Heart. I don't use any Earthen Heart abilities, but you still need to get your Earthen Heart to at least, I think this is unlocked, the first, the second version of it is at 28 or 27. You want to get it to 28, at least, so you can use Battle Roar. Battle Roar is super effective. When you cast your ultimate, you gain health, magic, and stamina by 70% of the ultimate cost. This has helped me survive so many times. You drop your standard and you're boosted back up almost basically to full health, stamina, and magicka. It helps a lot, and you're going to need this in PvP. As for armor, we're not going into any heavy armor. Now, there's reasons why I'm not using heavy armor. The state of the game right now, the way PvP works, heavy armor is outclassed by light armor, okay? And that's sad to say because you would think a tank would be wearing heavy armor. Unfortunately, tank nowadays are wearing 7 out of 7 light. Well, at least... That's how it works for my build, so that's how we're going to be doing it. If you want to go with heavy armor, that's not a problem. But I really like the magicka regeneration and reduction of magicka cost that I get from wearing light armor. So that's all I have, okay? I'm going to show you guys some more clips of me using this build, some epic clips. And hopefully you guys improve this build, take it, modify it, make it your own, or just copy it exactly how it is because it's working really well for me. Thank you guys. You guys requested for me to make a video like this. If you still have more questions that I have not answered in this video, comment below. I will read every single comment. I will reply to your comments. And I will see you guys next time. Like, comment, and subscribe for future ESO content.